Hope everyone is doing well. So I have a specific message um, for today. Uh, those of you who are service-based business owners who own brick and mortar businesses, this is going to be a broadcast you're really going to want to hear about, okay? So I want to make some distinctions in what people who own successful service-based uh, brick and mortar businesses in, in particular uh, do that the average brick and mortar business just does not do and I'm not sure if it's because they are unaware or I think oftentimes when we open our business we just think that we have this thing that is just going to work if we just go in there and work um, it is going to work but there are a lot of people who work really, really hard for a really long time, guys, and never get to the measure of success that they desire. And one of the reasons I fully believe this happens is because they continue to stay in the seed stage of their business, irregardless of how many years they've been doing business. And sometimes the number of years we've been in a thing will cause us to... Um, feel a level of expertise in it right do you guys get what I'm saying regardless of whether we have reached a certain measure of success or not that number of years just kind of gives us the impression that you know we we kind of have reached expert status but I want to share with you what and I'm gonna share this out I want to share with you what service-based businesses that are brick and mortar are doing that are that's causing the distinction in between them being busy and continuously getting clients and being in a flow and those that may feel like you know it's tremendously slow or I mean people have even even been saying you know brick and mortar businesses are dead I do not believe that I don't believe they're going anywhere I do believe that a great distinction is going to be made in between those businesses that are you know really doing business and putting systems in place and those who you know just kind of were anticipating that if they built it the people would come I do think there's going to be a stark difference in you know those two different types of brick and mortar businesses uh, there's more I could say about the really really large uh, brick and mortar businesses as well um, there are going to be some distinctions and some changes that are going to have to be made I've even noticed that um, some of the larger brands are doing ads and marketing in a way where they can get more connectivity with people than they ever have before you know they were so accustomed to just marketing and you know people buying from them but people are really in a space where connection matters people want to know that a brand stands for something there's a purpose behind it there's something bigger than just the thing that they do and this is where I'm going to talk about all the things, okay? Um, because I'm getting into some of what I want to share. And if you guys do me a favor, <clears throat> if you come on, share this broadcast out with someone that you feel. One second. Uh, we're sharing over here. Someone that you feel could use the message. Maybe they own a brick and mortar service based business. And this might be for them. So, Number one, I, I think I have about five things that I want to share with you all as it relates to, you know, what's really making the brick and mortar businesses that are successful, successful. What is the difference in the successful service-based brick and mortar businesses and those that are, you know, fighting for survival or, you know, just hit or miss? or have average things transpiring that's not really pushing them to the next level. So number one, um, they don't rely only on word of mouth. They do not rely only on word of mouth. And I think word of mouth is absolutely amazing. If you build a business and you can build it to you know a few hundred thousand dollars 
just on word of mouth alone organically you've got something special right you have something special but if you want to continue to grow if you're going to bring staff in and other people that you're going to be responsible for paying their paychecks or bringing customers into the business for them to even service at some point word of mouth is not going to be enough to do it I have a friend who owns a brick and mortar service based business who does absolutely no marketing and they are busy the majority of the time they're not on social media it's one person they have only had two locations their entire um, 30 plus year career their phone number has been the cha the same I mean nothing has really changed there was a season where there were other workers there and they had commercials you know on TV but you know even after not doing those things anymore they don't do any type of marketing but it's one person right and growth isn't super super important uh, just sustaining was you know the goal for them so there are businesses that don't do any form of marketing other than word of mouth but in today's times most of you who may have been relying on that only are now seeing that you need more than just word of mouth there needs to be something in place that's bringing in more clients other than just word of mouth because what happens there's the wait time in between the last client that refers the next client and that person actually comes now if you have been super consistent and you got a flow and that is working for you cool beans but I personally feel that successful businesses are operating off of more than just um, word of mouth. I'll give you guys an example. So I owned a brick and mortar service based business for over a decade prior to coaching and consulting. And before I opened my brick and mortar business, I was just self employed. So I was a contract to help where I rented out a, a small a, a booth, a space. And when I moved to my new location, I lost 90% of the amazing clientele I'd had before 90% could you imagine losing 90% so statistically um, studies show that whenever you move from one location to another you lose approximately 20% of your customers but I lost about 90% over I think I noticed it maybe a few years in and you're probably wondering like how did you not notice 90% for a few years and guys it wasn't because I didn't value my clients it wasn't because I didn't feel a connectivity to them it was because I was always getting new people because I had systems in place that was always bringing in new clients and customers and I was the visionary of a place I had a staff of about 12 people I was leading and so I didn't really have time to notice that Miss Carol wasn't coming anymore if that makes sense and plus my customer care coordinators were in charge of those types of systems you know checking back in at a certain amount of time with people who had not been in a while so that wasn't a department that I was looking at um, and I never missed a beat money wise because as those people were no longer coming new people were always coming in because of the systems and what most people have is these droughts where they feel like business is extremely slow because they don't have anything else other than I'm waiting on the clients that I already have maybe hoping they'll refer somebody everything is more like hope instead of having a strategy and systems in place and so successful uh, brick and mortar service based businesses are not relying solely on word of mouth and you guys have to understand that clients have uh, a life cycle these are the inner working things that you do when you really want to take your business to the next level and you're having someone like myself help you to really look deeper into your business you learn what your client journey is and your client cycle is all of those different things and once you are aware those things are predictable then you can put the right measures in place to avoid them so for instance clients divorce 
the household income changes. Clients um, um, have unfortunate circumstances where someone may lose a job. They may become a one household income. Uh, someone could be sick. People move. People leave. All kinds of things happen, right? People change. Um, they go through like an awakening and the environments they used to like, they don't anymore. Um, and people also evolve. And so they may want to experience something at a different level, right? At a different vibe, a different frequency. So all types of things happen for why clients and customers no longer come to you. But if you're relying on word of mouth and you don't have systems in place that are bringing new clients into your, your business, then you're impacted even more greatly when those um, customer cycles or life cycles or just normal things, ebbs and flows of business happen, they impact you more heavily. So number one, um, they do more than word of mouth. Successful service-based business owners are doing more than just word of mouth. Now we love word of mouth, right? We love word of mouth. It's organic. You don't have to pay anything for it. You just have to do a really good job and people refer you. One of the best forms of advertisement is a satisfied customer who is talking about you and sharing with you. But if you are counting your business growth, like you don't have a hand in that, Right, so that's the number one. Number two, um, they're always marketing. Successful, service-based, brick and mortar businesses are always marketing. They're always marketing. One of the number one things I hear from um, owners of businesses is, you know, they're working so much they don't have time to market. They're working so much they don't have time to market. but your goal at some point has to be not that you're doing all the work for the business but the business is doing the work for you is this making sense you create systems and strategies so that the business is working for you and so many owners are feeling like you know if i don't get go get the money then then what but that's where systems and things come in place because a business that doesn't market doesn't grow. And if you're bringing staff, team, all of those in, they got to eat too, <laughs> right? And it's you're not going to be able to create enough revenue as one person for as big as you want to grow your business. And if you have people coming in that you are hiring that are going to duplicate some of the services that you do, they need customers so they can make money. So they can be happy about the place that they are working as well or so that you can easily pay them, you know, depending on your, your pay structure or if you're just paying um, administrative staff or whatever the case is. You just can't produce enough as one person, right, for everybody to eat. So they're always marketing. That's number two. Number three, they understand who they're marketing to. They also understand who they're marketing to. So it's not just I'm randomly marketing. I'm random, randomly putting my stuff out there. And where what comes in with this is branding. So when you get clear on who you are as a brand, when you understand your brand's identity, all of that, all of the other things that you need to do will fall in place. The voice, your, your brand story, um, who you are as a brand, your perfect piece. So I've heard many people tell people, you don't need to focus on branding. You just need to focus on getting this other stuff done. But when you get clear on branding, a, a lot of the other stuff clears up. A lot of the other stuff clears up. So, for instance, I was looking, I looked online for um, holistic type businesses, right? And I saw what I thought was absolutely beautiful, my perfect type of client was a chiropractor. And they called, their business was called Holistic Vitality. Now, for one, they separated themselves completely from just being a chiropractor because automatically, even though I've been in the beauty and wellness industry for many, many years, when I hear chiro chiropractic, chiro chiropractor, I automatically think car accident, back trouble, snap back type of thing. 
I don't think like wellness or anything like that. Although I understand that having yourself adjustment adjusted could bring in some type of wellness, but that's not even me being in the wellness industry. It's not an immediate thought that comes to mind. But this particular company has brand began to brand themselves. I don't know about the internal workings. I didn't do the website. I haven't spoken with them. But just from what they put up there, they've set themselves apart. So they understand that although they may do some of those more um, aligning services for the back and different things of that nature, they understand that a certain type of customer or clients, let's say client, because customers can come and go clients, you normally build relationships and connections with and they're with you for a long time. But it would be a certain type of client who is looking for um, a, a chiropractic office that says holistic vitality. I hope you guys get what I'm saying. So many people are um, into trends and into being general that they kind of wash out with everything else. So trends come and go. So if you build your business based off the new trend or the, the thing that's new or going on, <clears throat> when the trend leaves, then you find yourself changing what you do in your business or what you're offering in your business. But if you build your business from within, if you really uh, begin to understand who you are as a brand, then your business is usually built from a true skill set or true level of expertise and interest and alignment that you have that many other people who are in alignment with the same thing are going to connect with and vibe with and all of those things when you've been intentional um, about branding. But if you've been general, and I remember on many occasions, well, still, well, I don't have it as often, let me say that, because, um, well, no, I can't say that. I, I do. Um, but definitely when I first brought coaching and consulting online, when I would ask people who their ideal client is, this is how I ended up developing the perfect people framework because I said people need a, a way to really be able to simplify and deeply understand who is an aligned fit for you know their, their business and their brand. But most people would say they service everybody. When, I, when asked, and it's a something, <laughs> mosquito, when asked who they service, they would say, I service everybody. I service from kids to people 80. When you're that general, when, when an industry begins to change, one of the first places to go are the most general. I'm just, I don't know how else to say it. Those who specialize. So, um, I don't know, is this number three? So I said, um, they always market. They don't rely on only on word of mouth referrals. Um, they understand who they're marketing to. And then I got into the fact that they have specialized. Mm -hmm. Most brick and mortar, service-based uh, brick and mortar businesses who do really well have specialized in one or two ways. They've either specialized in who their product or service is for, who their service is for, or what they do. And those who really, really do it well have done both. They've done both, but they specialize. And uh, last but not least thing that I want to share with you is they can measure their results. Most people are doing things so organic and random and there really aren't any systems and word of mouth is good and everything is organic and it's been working up until a certain point, but they may be finding that business is tanking or slowing down or switching and tweaking and they can't figure it out but if you don't have systems then you have nothing to measure so you don't know where the last referral actually came from or you don't know what part of your business is the point where people are no longer connecting or they stop they don't go any higher in the level of services that you're offering you don't know any of those things if you don't have things that you can measure so successful service-based business uh, brick and mortar businesses, they know what they can measure. They have systems so they can measure. If you heard yourself in any of those spaces, I have two ways to support you 
that I think are super aligned for those of you who are service-based business owners who own a brick and mortar business. Number one, if you like self-study and you want an elongated amount of time, a self-paced amount of time to be able to understand who you are as a brand, to understand marketing, um, to understand uh, email marketing, even all the things. I have the ultimate growth track for women in business. It's called 3D Success Academy. It is a 12 month opportunity. You have a different module, business module, uh, uploaded to you each and every month. Um, it's also inclusive of um, personal growth and development. So it's about mindset and personal growth and all the things. It's an amazing 12 month opportunity. And also, uh, you get to coach with me live at the end of every single month. So if you have questions about the modules that you are getting access to each and every month, and I say month because it's a different subject every month, but you actually get them every week, right? And it's, it's self-paced. It's for a year. And at the end of every month, I do a live coaching call with everyone who's in the community um, who has questions that they like answered about whichever sec section monthly module that they are on and the second way is for those of you who are uh, service-based brick-and-mortar business owners who don't have time <laughs> you're like look I don't have time for an entire year at this point but I really need to put some systems in place I really need a new level of clarity in my business I need to understand who I am as a brand you know different things um, my VIP growth strategy day would be an excellent opportunity for you to pick an area of your business um, and just really deep dive on for that particular day. We actually go over six focus areas and then you pick an area that you really want to strategize on. That would be an amazing opportunity for you. I will put those uh, different options in the comments here. If you have any questions, you can come back and um, comment on the broadcast I always come back and respond or you can leave a, a question that you may have up here and I'll respond to that too that is my take for those of you you are in the service based industry you own brick and mortar business um, yeah though that's what's successful five of the things in anyway there are more things but I thought those things would be things that you could really look at your practice and align and see if those are things that you're doing. They're things that you can um, create systems for and, and tweak into your business. And if you're ready to do that and you like support, I've given you two ways that we can work together to make that happen. That's my take on today. I'm going to come back at some point this week and maybe speak to coaches because most of the uh, brick and mortar service based business owners or just service based business owners period usually end up going to a space where they have created a level of expertise and they're ready to coach teach or train and I'll come back a different day and and talk about that as well okay you guys have a good one peace and abundance